Welcome. It's Jenkins Documentation Office Hours. It's the 17th of February, 2023, Asia. And so we've got some items that I've proposed for the agenda. So action items. We had Google Summer of Code preparation last time. Uh, Rajiv, we could talk about that one again if you're interested. Jenkins Awards. Documentation transition to Java 17. An end-of-life checklist has been discussed. Preparation for CentOS 7 end-of-life. And that was about it. Rajiv, are there other topics you'd like to add to the list? Uh, no, no. Uh, I think no, no. Okay. And we can wait for Chris. Uh, okay, maybe. I'm All right. Sure yeah. And and I was assuming we could spend time on Google Summer of Code preparation. So mm -hmm. so that's a, a great one to have you. Hey Meg, welcome. Nope, still no sound from Meg. I see Meg twice, but no sound. So let's go ahead then. So how about while we're waiting for I see your picture now, Meg. but still no audio. All right, well, so if you can hear Meg, that's great. So there are some pieces while you're working on figuring that out, let's go through the easy parts of the agenda, the kind of, uh, we can just keep you informed and then we talk about it from there. So one of the items is Jenkins Awards 2023. I'm gonna move GSOC preparation down and we'll see if Chris Stern joins us. Okay, so Jenkins Awards 2023. Each year, the Continuous Delivery Foundation proposes and accepts nominations for three awards in the Jenkins community. Most Valuable Jenkins Contributor, Security MVP, and Most Valuable Jenkins Advocate. So what we do is we submit nominations by, so we nominate by adding comments comments to the GitHub issues link to there. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, I can see you, hear you just great, Meg. I don't know why, but all of a sudden I could hear you. Okay, continue. All right, so these the Jenkins Awards are open. It opens, nominations close the March, the 3rd of March. So submit your nominations. You can self-nominate, et cetera, but submit nominations, um, et cetera. Now, as a matter of rule, the, last, the winners from last year can't win it a second year in a row. That means that this one, Basil Crow, who was that candidate last year, won't be eligible this year. I believe last year, Vadek Folonier, was the security MVP and therefore not eligible. Uh, Vadek was the security MVP and also then not eligible. And then most valuable Jenkins advocate, I believe this was Darren Pope last year and again, not eligible this year. Uh, Alyssa Tong has gotten that started and it's administered by the CDF, but we host the, the nominations in our repository. Any questions on the Jenkins Awards? No. Okay, next topic then. Documentation transition to Java 17. So beginning in April or May of 2023, Debian 12 release. And Debian 12 at its release will no longer deliver Java 11. It will deliver Java 17. 
because it's delivering Java 17, uh, we don't want two sets of documentation. So we intend in April or May with that release to switch the default description of our installations to use Java 17. So Java 17 is already supported. Uh, we'll, you, we'll just, we'll switch the, the instructions to use it as the default. Uh, Java 11 continues to be supported. And uh, we look forward to making that transition. Now, Tim, or no, uh, Kevin Martins has the action item to share with Tim that that's the proposal from the documentation side. Any questions there? Sounds like a plan to me. Okay. Next piece was we've got a number of end of life events coming up for various operating systems. Um, Ubuntu 18 ends life in April of this year. Alpine 314 in May. Alpine 315 in November. And then a year from, whoops, a year from now, or a little over 15 months from now, um, CentOS 7 will be absolutely end of life. So the idea here was, hey, let's assemble a checklist that reminds us of all the things we need to do to properly end of life an operating system in, in Jenkins. And so that's, that's one that's ongoing work. The idea, idea there is Kevin will probably create a, uh, create a template in the template in the Jenkins docs repo and then create copies of that template for each obsolescence, each end of life. So the, it, this is patterned after, after the release checklist or the, re, yeah, the release, yes, the, after the release checklist that we use for Jenkins LTS releases. So it, it's just a nice thing to have a checklist that we use to work through, hey, how does, have we done all these things as we reach end of life on an operating system? Any questions there? No, good idea. Okay, all right. And last is, our last? Yeah, last. We've got a, I've got a proposal because I don't like CentOS 7. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I admit it, it's me. Um, I don't I like don't, it. Be period, I don't like CentOS X, so. <laughs> All right. Well, CentOS 7 has an ancient version of command line Git and an ancient version of SSH. And those ancient versions complicate complicate Jenkins plugins, no, noticeably the Git plugin. Uh -huh. And I want to get rid of that complication. Well, as further argument why we should get rid of it, the CentOS 7 Docker container has been deprecated for almost five months now. Huh. And the CentOS project entered maintenance mode in 2020 and will end of life in 2024. So completely there won't be more CentOS. Well, no more CentOS 7 for sure. Oh, there and they've, they've done a different thing with the, a thing they now call CentOS Stream that is the next, it's, it's a predecessor of the next release of Red Hat Enterprise Linux. So they've shifted it to be closer, more like Fedora than what, it, what CentOS 7 was. CentOS 7 was just a simple copy of Red Hat 7. Okay. So now we've got, so this is, this is a difference from the past in that usually we would continue to support this thing until it's official end of support by the operating system provider. So we would typically have supported it until June of 2024. But given the Docker container is deprecated and given the pain and suffering caused by the ancient programs inside of it, 
I'm taking the proposal that I think I'm going to propose a Jenkins enhancement proposal that ends its life early. Does anybody of consequence use CentOS? Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, for instance, Darren Pope created a video showing how to install with CentOS 7. And there are quite a number of, of issues reported related to it. For instance, the big reason why this thing, this ancient SSH was a problem for the Git plugin was because of bug reports where CentOS 7 users said, hey, your Git plugin defaults broke me on CentOS 7. Uh -huh. Every other platform was fine, but CentOS 7 was broke. So did that answer your question, Meg? Right. So that, I mean, is there going to, are these people, are there people using CentOS 7 that are going to be upset by this? There, there will be, but they'll be every bit as upset in June of 2024. Yes. Because many of them will say, I want to keep using it, even though the project no longer supports it. And, and the answer is Jenkins will absolutely drop support in June of 2024 because we won't support something that the upstream no longer supports. Right. So the idea is because our installer already doesn't support it and because the containers aren't supported, it's already coming to a premature end of life. And since it's coming to a premature end of life anyway, let's make it explicit and declare it end of life. And so what we'll need is things like a blog post and a timeline, uh, you know, blog post, timeline, uh, warnings to users from a Jenkins admin monitor uh, so that they'll get a little pop-up that says, hey, you're running your controller on CentOS 7 and CentOS 7 support from the Jenkins project will end in let's say December of 2023, something like that. Just for the sake of, do they have any record? I mean, if they wanted to grab their own copies of the plugins and keep them updated for CentOS 7, et cetera? Uh, I mean, sure, they could, they could certainly fork the plugins and you know, create their own private copies and decide, hey, I'm gonna maintain it that's not a typical behavior for a CentOS 7 user. That's what I, yeah. That's what I'm just wondering. If there's like a big company out there that's got some other though critical software that won't run on anything but CentOS 7 or something. Yes, then they, they certainly, because it's open source, they could certainly maintain it uh, themselves. They could uh, care for it. And right now we're not taking any active measures to, to make things any worse, we just want to officially declare we're going to stop testing there, we're going to stop uh, documenting there, and we're going to we're going to make it. Here, let's show what I like this way of describing it. It will become one of these if we look at the Java requirements. This page says. Oh, no, no, Java, no, that's not it. I want Java, hmm, where this is, I'm looking for something different. Sorry, Meg, just a minute. We want the Java requirements page. No, I want the Java support. Oh, the Linux support policy. Sorry, not the Java support policy, this one. All right, so here's our Linux support policy. We define three support, three support levels. Level one, supported. All right, and in level one, supported, we say, hey, we run tests of this thing. We test the container images. We run all sorts of different things to assure that they continue working. And that's where CentOS 7 is right now. There is a second layer where we say, hey, we don't actively test these, but they're still supported. And that includes 32-bit things, uh, RISC-V and PowerPC, other architectures that we don't support at the top level. 
but these are supported by their providers in terms of the platform we're on. The third level is this, is reserved for Linux versions no longer supported by operating system providers. So in this case, Ubuntu 16 is one of these. It's no longer supported by Ubuntu. Therefore, we don't support Jenkins on it. Uh, CentOS 6 is like this. The proposal is let's explicitly place CentOS 7 in this level three already earlier than June of 2024. It will be there in June of 2024 anyway. Right. Fine with me. All right, cool. I think CentOS, I mean, of course, I'd like to stop supporting Windows, so. <laughs> oh, now that's terrible because I'm running the meeting from a Windows computer. I don't know what you're saying. Windows is a lovely thing. <laughs> all right. So that covered all the topics I had. Rajiv, you, as part of your work on Google Summer of Code, were there any things that you wanted to discuss or questions you wanted to raise? Yeah, so uh, I talked with Chris. So she said, like, uh, so um, uh, Chris has updated some status page of GShop. So the thing is that uh, I saw that commit. So we are waiting for the 2022 Feb, uh, where the list of uh, projects will be announced. And after that, we'll have a uh, like session on that. So we are waiting for the uh, we are waiting for the result, whether we will be selected for this project or not. Right. Okay, so after the announcement, there will be a weekly yeah. office hours for weekly Google Summer of Code office hours for org admins and mentors. Had you seen that yeah. announcement, Rajiv? Uh, yeah, so after the announcement, we'll have a kickoff meeting and right. maybe we can discuss about that. Good, very good. And now your, if I remember correctly, your past experience was with site generation. And so you were interested in the, the doc site generation project. Yeah. So site generation for Jenkins.io and you were willing to mentor, Ajeev is willing to mentor based on your experience with a site generation project in a previous Google Summer of Code, is that correct? Yeah. All right. So Meg, for your info, this is a project to use Antora ah. to build the Jenkins.io site and to allow the docs pages to be version specific. Nice. Right, right. It's a, it's a really, it's a great idea. And the, the, the nice thing here is that Rajiv has done something like this in years past for another project as part of Google Summer of Code. So Rajiv is willing this year to help by being a mentor on it. Rajiv, did I say that correctly? Yeah, yeah. And Meg was my mentor last time. Oh, oh, oh. He was captain. Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh. <laughs> oh, well, that's that's great. Okay, so so you've had interactions with with more than just Chris Stern on this project. Very good. Yeah. All right. Well, so do you have any other questions, Rajiv? Uh, no, no, not as of me. So, Meg, any other topics for you? Nope. Okay. Well, I think I'm going to propose to pause to stop here then because. I've got a hot bug in Jenkins core that I want to fix and it needs me to write a test for it. So I'm gonna call an end for docs office hours today unless there are other topics we wanna to discuss. I'm good. All right, Rajiv, thank you. We'll look forward to talking to you when Google, where I'm intensely hopeful that Jenkins will be accepted and that announce, that'll be announced on the 22nd and then We'll talk to you at Google Summer of Code office hours. Now, next week, I'm canceling this session. Uh, so, oh, that's right. I should make a note of that. Um, cancel this meeting next week because Mark is going to, 
Miami with Ooh. Colleen. Oh, how lovely. Well, for a vacation. Now, nice. Ugh. I don't like Miami any better than I like CentOS, but <laughs> it's negative today on everything you do. <laughs> now, now, just so we're clear, Meg, Miami is a lot better than the 17 degree Fahrenheit weather I had in Colorado today. Um, I lived there for two and a half years. So, well, Fort Lauderdale. So yeah, I, I would actually argue I'd rather have the 17 than <laughs> than, than Florida. Every building doesn't smell of mildew. <laughs> See, no, no, that's and you don't have that, three inch bugs that crawl across the floor that you can smash and they keep moving. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And that's that's the price you pay for living in a tropical paradise. Rajiv, I assume that you live probably in India somewhere. So you yeah. understand hot and wet and that winter time probably doesn't bring much snow to you, right? Yeah. Yeah, so we're gonna make a trip to a place that's probably nearer to your weather than to my weather. Right, what are you gonna do in Miami then? We're just gonna wander around and have fun. All right. <laughs> All right, well, thanks everybody. We will talk to you in two weeks. Fabulous. Thank you. Thanks. Bye. 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 Bye.